This presentation is about the Black Panthers Oakland Community School, also known as the Oakland Community Learning Center. The Black Panther Party was originally called the Black Panther Party of Self-Defense, which meant looking out for one's community, supporting survival. There were many survival programs. It was required in order to open a chapter, one must have social programs. Let's listen to Bobby Seale speak of the 10-point plan of the Black Panther Party. You say we want freedom, we want power to determine the destiny of our black community. Full employment for our people. Number three, we want housing fit, decent housing fit for shelter of human beings. Number four, we want all black men to be exempt from military service. Number five. <laughs> We want decent education for our black people in our community that teaches us the true nature of this decadent racist society and to teach black people and our young black brothers and sisters their place in the society because if they don't know their place in society and in the world, they can't relate to anything else. Number six, we want an end to the robbery by the white racist businessman of black people and black people in their, in their community. Number seven, we want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. Number eight, we want all black men held in county, state, federal jails and prisons to be released because they have not had a fair trial because they've been tried by all white juries and that's just like being tried in Germany being a Jew. Number eight, black people, number nine, when brought to trial will be tried by members of their peers. And a peer being one who comes from the same economic, social, religious, historical, and racial background. If the United States government and the courts and the local courts did this, they would have to choose black people from the black community to sit up on the jury. They'd have to choose some of the mothers who've been working 20 years in Miss Ann's kitchen scrubbing floors like my mother and done. They have to choose some of them hard-working fathers. They have to choose some of those brothers who stand on the block out there wondering where they're going to get a gig. They're going to have to choose these black people. And number 10, you can say, let's just summarize it. We want housing. We want clothing. We want education. We want justice. And we want peace. The basic platform. Huey Newton sums it up nicely. The program was a comprehensive program to really lay down blueprint for community development. An important inspiration came from the 1964 Mississippi Project. Charles Cobb proposed adding freedom schools to the project. Each school, although um, ha had shared foundational curriculum, was unique to meet the needs of the students it served. Communities needed a safe place for their children to go to school. In fact, the Black Panthers needed it for their own children as their children were being harassed by school teachers. COLINTELPRO was working hard to discredit the Black Panthers through planting false reports in the media, wrongful arrest and imprisonments based on trumped up charges. The Black Panthers uh, had liberation schools by volunteers throughout the country, schools and storefronts, churches and homes, as a way to break the cycle of oppression. In Oakland, the children's house was so popular they had to get a bigger building. The school was called the Intercommunal Youth Institute. The Youth Institute was so popular that a larger building was needed Huey Newton then founded the Nonprofit Educational Opportunities Corporation to help fund the growing community school. In 1973, the school reopened with a new name and location. Let's hear about the school from Erica Huggins, 
and we provided tuition free three meals a day, transportation to and from school because some people did not have bus fare for their children. And we, we had martial arts. We had full meals that were hand cooked by an amazing team of people in the kitchen. We had hatha yoga and later on we had meditation. We started the day with 10 minute exercises. Our teachers really loved the children. If they didn't know something, they would just say, I don't know, I will find out for you. We had teachers who were members of the Black Panther Party, like myself, and not only was a director, I taught in language arts, but we also had teachers who took a cut in pay from the public schools to come and teach at Oakland Community School. We were also parent friendly. So parents worked in our in and out of our classrooms and supported everything. And particularly those women and men who didn't have jobs. There was no principal's office to send people to. They could come to me if they wanted to tell me, the children wanted to tell me an idea about how to improve the school. My door was always open. Our way of working with children was early restorative practices. We had a youth advisory board so that if you made a mistake and got into an argument with your peers or you didn't do your homework over a period of time, you greeted a, a group of children and an adult advisor in the room who would ask you why you thought you were behaving in that way. There was nothing punitive. If you couldn't sit still in the classroom, you'd go out into the courtyard of this old church building and do the tree pose, which is a hatha yoga pose that you cannot do unless you ground yourself. We want children to learn how, not what to think. And our motto, I didn't tell you what our motto, the world is a child's classroom. We brought the world to them. And let me just tell you some of our visitors. Maya Angelou, Rosa Parks, James Baldwin, Sun Ra, Richard Pryor. It goes on and on and on. And they were so loving of the children. James Baldwin left in tears and said to me, Erica, every child should have a place like this. I wish that the Oakland Community School still existed today, but it stopped in 1982 when the Black Panther Party ended. Why did we do all of this? Because we tried as best we could to ask people what they wanted. We didn't go into the community and say, okay, here's what you need. We asked people, what do you want? And people kept saying, we need a school. Our babies need somewhere where they can be appreciated and loved no matter what they look like, sound like, move like, no matter how we think about their intelligence. They had all kinds of fundraisers, radiothons, concerts. The governor recognized the school as one of the most outperforming excellent schools in California. Rebop, precursor to Reading Rainbow. I'm LeVar Burton and today we're going to look at schools that feature new approaches to education. Well, our first visit will be to California, where we'll go to the Oakland Community Learning Center. This is a school that was started by a political organization in the black community of Oakland. Before you can really appreciate a visit to this school, you'll probably need some background information. Well, back in the 60s, a man named Huey Newton started a group called the Black Panthers. They were a very controversial outfit back then because they were critical of the way in which the local police behaved in their community. Many people know of the Panthers because of their run-ins with the police. But there's another side to this organization. In Oakland, in many ways a poor community, the Panthers are also known for their projects like the Breakfast Program for School Children and for the Community Learning Center. When we visited the center, we saw that they had a different approach to teaching and learning. We're going to be meeting a student at the Learning Center, a young lady named Kalita. And when the film opens, Kalita is interviewing Huey Newton, founder of the Black Panthers. Where did you come from? Uh, <clears throat> well, I was born in Louisiana, in the uh, south, in Monroe, Louisiana. And uh, I came, uh, my family uh, came to Oakland uh, when I was about one and a half. So uh, I've been here about, what, 34 years? I'm 35 now. Uh, I'm an old man. <laughs> but uh, I, I went to about every school in Oakland. We moved a lot. What was it like in your school? We were, we were being taught mostly about white people. We didn't have any books of our own, so uh, it wasn't. We didn't. Uh, we didn't feel that um, that the school uh, was teaching us anything about ourselves. So uh, it was a great problem uh, in school for me and for the uh, teachers. 
And um, that's why as I grew older, I always felt that um, uh, as I grew older and learned about our true history, that uh, Africa, uh, before its conquest, was a beautiful, uh, cultured country. And uh, we had great universities uh, in Timbuktu. And I started to look at myself and get a new interest in, uh, in, uh, in education. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that I'm so proud of uh, your school. Look who's here, Punchinella, Punchinella. Look who's here, Punchinella in the shoe. Oh. My name is Kalita Smith. I'm eight and a half years old. I live in Oakland, California. Oh, we can do it too, Punchinella, Punchinella. I go to school at the Oakland Community Learning Center. My school was started by the Black Panther Party. The earliest age to start going to this school is when you're two. You say, si, quiero. We don't have grades in our school. We have levels. Manzanas. They gustan manzanas? They put us in different levels based on what we can do. They gusta? They gusta? The schools, uh, er everything was uh, a, a problem. For, for an example, uh, they used to serve cookies and uh, I could think graham crackers and milk in the morning uh, to, to uh, children uh, in primary school who had the money to pay for it. And if you didn't have the money to pay for it, you had to put your head on the desk until the other kids uh, finished eating. I always thought that was uh, very bad, but at the uh, Oakland Community School, everybody eats. My school serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because sometimes your mother or father or whoever you're living with probably don't have enough food for you. Some of the people who serve food are teachers. I like you best, and uh, oh, I like the children best, because um, the children at the school are, I, I think, just fantastic. Um, we weren't allowed to be free to uh, be creative, and, and uh, our curiosity was, uh, uh, and our questions about things um, were slowly uh, discouraged. Uh, whenever I asked a question in the class, if it was an intelligent question, the teacher would think I was just trying to be smart. And I would say, be quiet, you know, or else go ahead and sit in the corner. But the children in our school are free, and they ask all sort of questions, and they, uh, uh, we try to give them an answer. But they teach us so much. I think that uh, you teach us a lot, uh, because... Uh, we need to know the things that you're thinking because you come up with fresh ideas, you see. <laughs> you're our future. We'll learn things from you and uh, you, you will make the future for us. And uh, in doing that, it, uh, it makes better people out of us because we go on progressing and learning. You know, we all have to uh, keep learning uh, about things. Like your mother, she's in uh, the university. She's still going to school just like you. And uh, uh, what I would like most, uh, uh, as far as the future of our school is concerned, is to just uh, create an environment where we don't uh, stop you from asking questions. Always ask questions about everything. So that's the only way you'll find out things. And then after you get the answers, don't be satisfied with that, because no one has the whole answer. We only have part of it. And if we pretend we have the whole, we're not telling the truth.
the Oakland Community School left its mark on many of the programs we have today.